sushi is so good. I could eat it every single day. If you say all you can eat, my next word will be sushi. Mm. What do you think, Jasmine? Mm -hmm. That's like your equivalent of wagging your tail, I feel. <laughs> Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Merle, and today we're gonna be doing Make It Vegan From Home. It might look a little bit different, but it's still gonna be totally fun, and we're gonna make it work. So today I'm gonna have my very good friend, Jasmine Pack, on the show, which is very exciting. You guys may know her as the producer from Giant Food Time on Bring Me. She's a huge foodie, and I happen to know that her favorite food is sushi. So today, I'm going to be sending her some sushi from my favorite vegan sushi spot. And then I'm gonna show her how to make her own homemade vegan sushi. And we'll see which one she likes the best. Ring, ring. Hey, Jasmine! Hey, how are you? Oh, it's so good to see your shiny face. I just wanna pinch your cheek. Yeah, pinch me, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> this is what this lockdown has done to us. <laughs> All right, Jasmine, straight up. You love sushi. Tell me, talk to me about how much you love sushi and why do you love sushi? Merle, it's so good. I put my face really close, so you know I mean serious <laughs> business. I can tell. If you say all you can eat, my next word will be sushi. All you can eat. Yes. No, you're supposed to say sushi. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> If you have had sugarfish in LA, it is the bomb.com. I could eat it every day, sometimes I do. If you've had their tuna roll, it's super soft, tender, supple. You can cut through it like butter. I also love the eel roll, the umami in it. I think it's a very unique flavor and you can't not have eel when you go get sushi. So you're painting quite the picture for me here. We got a modern day Bob Ross. <laughs> what can I say? Okay, so today we're gonna be trying some vegan sushi from Shojin, which is a 100% plant-based sushi place. I know what you're thinking, it's vegan and sushi, what is that? But listen, I think it's gonna blow you away, Jasmine. Oh, I, I am very excited because last time you made me fish and chips from Celery Root, it tasted just like it. Okay, likeness to fish, zero. <laughs> okay, okay, with the shade. <laughs> It was good, it just wasn't the same, you know? Funny you should say that. A little birdie tells me you've got a special delivery. Oh my gosh. All right, let's go eat. Okay, Jasmine, let me tell you a little bit about why I love Shojin so much. Yeah, sell it to me. They pride themselves on using only the highest quality ingredients that are organic when possible, and they avoid refined sugar, table salt, and gluten. All right, Jasmine, so first we're gonna be trying their dynamite roll, which is one of their top selling items. Let's do it. This roll features spicy tofu, which is the tuna, and it also includes avocado, spicy mayo, and beet sauce. Cheers! Cheers. That's f***ing good. Holy sh**. What I appreciate is the complexity of the flavors working together. And I know it's made with tofu, which I can actually taste, but I love tofu. I actually, I love this, I can't lie. It doesn't taste like fish to me either. It just tastes like really good sushi. I agree. Now we're gonna try their other most popular item, which is their baked crab cake hand roll. And this one has crab cake made out of enoki mushrooms, avocado, veganase, and a smoky sweet tamari sauce. This is good. Hmm. Sound like you're not buying it. I think it's because I have a very sensitive flavor palette and I love, love mushroom. So it doesn't even taste like crap to me. All I can taste is like it's a delicious fried enoki mushroom sort of concoction. It's not fooling you, but it's delicious. Yes. I thought it was super good, but I don't think everyone has a vegan sushi spot near them. It's funny you should say that. I'm going to be teaching you how to make it out of your own kitchen. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's hope that mine stacks up to your expectations now that I've given you this delicious vegan sushi. I don't know how you're gonna beat Shojin. Damn, don't spare my feelings. <laughs> okay, so as you know, Shojin used tofu to recreate the tuna in their rolls, but what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be using tomatoes. So we're using tomatoes to make tuna? Listen, I've got a plan here, okay? It's gonna be delicious. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with our tomatoes is we're gonna take a sharp knife and we're going to make a little X incision on the bottom there. And then at the top, you're just gonna use the pointy tip of your knife and you're gonna core the tomatoes as well. We've got a pot of boiling water here. We're just gonna put our tomatoes right there in the boiling water for about 60 to 90 seconds. And then once you start to notice the skin peeling away from that little X on the bottom, you can transfer them with a spoon over to your ice bath. 
Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do with your tomatoes is you're gonna take them out of their ice bath, and then we're just gonna gently peel away the skins. It's really fun, it kinda reminds me of like when you put glue on your hands, you know? Oh yeah! All right, so now that you're all peeled to the bone, you're gonna take your tomatoes and you're gonna cut them into quarters. So you can just follow those X's you made on the bottom all the way through. Can you see where we're going with this sushi thing? A thousand percent. It really looks like tuna. All right, and then once you've got them all quartered, we're gonna take the seeds out. All right, I know this is a vegan show, but my cutting board is looking like a straight up crime scene. I feel like Dexter. But yeah, this looks gruesome. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got all of our tomatoes seeded, we want to make our marinade. And our marinade is going to consist of half a cup of low sodium soy sauce. And then we're gonna do half a cup of rice vinegar and half a cup of a neutral oil. It smells like sushi. We're cooking up miracles here. I'm feeling good. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon and a half of granulated sugar. And finally, to, to give it the real fishy kick, we're gonna put in a nori sheet. Remember when you made um, salmon out of carrots? I sure do, I'm proud of that recipe. If this one is as good as that one, I'll give up non-vegan sushi what? for a week. Okay, okay, I was like, <laughs> wait, what? And we're gonna mix her up, and we're gonna plop them right in there, and then we're gonna put these sleeping beauties in the fridge to marinate. All right, so Jasmine, we're not done yet. Now we're gonna make something that resembles the eel sushi that you said you like so much, using eggplant. Ah. Whoa, that was way more badass than mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is take the tops off. The next step of this is gonna be to peel the entire eggplant, which I know you're thinking, oh, that's a lot of work, but listen, I got something to keep your mind busy while we're doing it. Oh yeah? I think it's time for some Vegan trivia! Whoa. 70%! <laughs> yes, that's right. According to a report by Greenpeace, what is the biggest plastic polluter in our oceans today? I would say microplastics or plastic water bottles. <coughs> plastic bags! Ugh. Discarded fishing gear. They estimate that 640,000 tons of commercial fishing lines, gear, nets, traps, and pots are discarded into the ocean every single year, which is the equivalent weight of 55,000 double-decker buses every single year in our oceans. And that's just commercial, so that doesn't even include private. Plastic in our oceans isn't the only problem with fishing. There's also overfishing and, of course, bycatch. Bycatch basically means that we're accidentally catching other marine life and disturbing marine ecosystems while we're trying to get the fish we want to eat. Oh my god. Now it doesn't even matter if this tastes good. I'm going to make it anyway. Okay, so first we're going to cut our eggplant right in half like so. So we've got two pieces here. And then with each half, we're gonna cut them into about one third inch slices. What is a third of an inch? Ooh, cute. All right, so now you've got your slices and I'm gonna lay down a cloth. Better to use a cloth, a reusable one, if you can. So I'm gonna lay out my slices and I'm gonna salt the first side and then I'm gonna flip them over and I'm gonna salt the other side as well. Okay, I'll salt it. Good work, Jasmine. We're gonna let these sit here for about 30 minutes, and in the meantime, we're gonna preheat our ovens to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That is 190 degrees Celsius. Are you ready for this? Ready! Okay, great. All right, now for our sauce, we're gonna use a third of a cup of sake, a third of a cup of maple syrup, a half a cup of mirin, and then a half a cup of more low sodium soy sauce. So we're gonna mix this up until it's very well blended. Okay, so now this is simmering. And after about 20 or 25 minutes, we will take this off the heat once it is reduced by about half. Okay, so now we just took our sauce off of the stove and we have let it cool down a bit. And finally, we're going to pat our eggplants dry. And then we're gonna cut these like planks into fourths. If you have a smaller one, then you can cut it into thirds. And then you're gonna transfer it to your baking mat. Now that we have it all evenly spread out nicely on the mat, we're gonna take about a quarter of our mixture and we're gonna evenly spread it over all of our pieces. Then we're gonna flip them and do the same thing with another quarter of the mixture on the other side. If you find that it's insanely tedious to flip each individual piece like I've decided it is, you can just really, once you got the glaze on there, mix them around like a roller skate. A roller skate? <laughs> like a roller skate? <laughs> like a roller skating rink. 
All right, we're gonna pop these in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna use the rest of our sauce and cover them one more time and then pop them back in the oven again for 10 more minutes. We've done a lot today, it's been a packed day, but now we've reached the final stage, it's time to actually build these little sushi friends. For those of you who don't know, a little tip is to wet your hands a bit first before you're handling the sushi rice, cause, oh she gets sticky all right, she gets real sticky. So we're gonna form it into a little oblong shape. I think I wet my hands too much, now it's falling apart. <laughs> No. Here's another a hot tip. If you want to keep your little tomato to stick on the top better, put a little, little teeny dot of wasabi on there. Really small, especially if you don't like spice because that's got a kick and a half to it. Then we're gonna pop our vegan tuna on top. Now we're gonna take our seaweed and we're gonna wrap it in a little package of love. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna take this little guy to prom with me. Look at it, it's cute! <laughs> I'm so excited about this, wow. All right, I'm moving on to my second sushi slab. This looks like a good one. You have been chosen as tribute. And then we're gonna brush just a little bit of our leftover sauce on top. Now I'm gonna wrap her up. Oh, they are cute, they're little friends. Okay, so the moment of truth has arrived. Jasmine, you've got all three of your sushi options there. You've got your favorite sushi, the tried and true, the 10 in your book from Sugarfish. And then you've got the ones that we got from Shoujin earlier today. And then of course you have our homemade versions that we just made. I'm so excited! Okay, so Jasmine, I'm gonna have you go ahead and try your Sugarfish sushi first. Don't mind if I do. Mm. <laughs> That's like your equivalent of wagging your tail, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Sugarfish never lets me down. I mean, come on, eel is unmatched. I'm nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and try the shoujin again. Mmm. I mean, the spicy tuna roll, like I said earlier, can still taste the tofu, but it's also reminiscent of spicy tuna and still reminds me of the sushi experience. Okay, what are we trying first? I'm gonna do the tomato one. Thoughts, feelings? Okay, visually, gorgeous. Experience, amazing. Taste, impeccable, but not tuna. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, it's not tuna. But you don't think it tastes anything like tuna? No. <laughs> there, there's a bite to the tomato that the tuna from Sugarfish doesn't have. What I love about Sugarfish tuna is that it's super soft and melts like butter. The tomato tuna, I enjoy it for what it is. I don't think it tastes exactly like tuna, but I would feel like I had a sushi experience. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Now why don't you try the eel? Wow, okay. Feels like an eel. No. <laughs> Aren't they like slimy? The eggplant eel is really good. I could put each one of those over sushi rice as a bowl and just scarf it down. The experience of eating the eggplant eel is very similar to eating eel because it looks like it. Like visually, it's just there. Also, the sauce is on point. Yay, okay, I'm feeling a little more confident now. Okay, it's time for you to pick. Just walk me through what you're thinking about both of your options here. The shoujin was super good. I'm super happy that you introduced it to me. While I thought the spicy tuna was amazing, I wasn't in love with the imitation crab roll, and I could still taste the tofu in the spicy tuna roll. For the ones we made today, I could taste the tomato in the tuna, but the eggplant eel sauce, life-changing. So what are you gonna rate these two? Shoujin, taking everything into account, I give it an eight. Oh, wow. And for the ones we made today, I give it a... Seven point seven six. No, no! <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have encouraged you to be honest. <laughs> It's respectable and I understand. I thought shoujins were incredible also. Okay, but I need to clarify, okay? Even though I gave shoujin a higher number, I still like the eggplant eel we made today more than I do the imitation crab roll from shoujin. Interesting, so you just like the tofu one so much from shoujin, that was the one that like, threw you over the edge. Yeah, it's so innovative, so many different flavors. This is healthy, there's protein, it's complex. What's not to love about it? 
I don't feel like there's a need to imitate the food. So if it's an imitation crab roll, why not just call it the fried enoki hand roll? Because I would be able to appreciate it for what it is. And the ones we made today, if you just called it marinated tomato, you wouldn't have ordered it. I would have enjoyed it. <laughs> I get what you're saying. I think that's a really good comment about like, innovation over imitation. And I think a lot of people that aren't vegan can resonate, that will resonate with them. Overall though, the ones we made today were absolutely delicious. I would not mind swapping these out a couple times a month just to reduce my sushi intake. Hey, I'm glad you had fun. And honestly, thank you so much for being on the show. You're such a treat every single time I talk to you. Thanks for having me. I learned so much. Thank you so much for watching. If there's anybody you'd like me to have on the show to try to veganize their favorite dish, or if there's a certain dish that you would like to see me make vegan, let us know in the comments below. Bye.